remember and celebrate the life of our dear Professor Isaiah Obayo. And shortly we shall be starting with the opening prayer. Thank him. Give him the glory. Magnify his name. Right now, let's begin to commit this program tonight into God's hand. Let's ask that he takes control. Let's ask that his will be done. Father, we ask that you take control tonight, Lord. Father, take charge. Take charge of this meeting tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, appreciate him. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so, Father, Lord, we commit this program tonight into your hands. Lord, let your will be done in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your Holy Spirit dwell with us and take everything and make everything a success in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, because we know you have heard and answered us. For in Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Let's lift up our hands tonight and begin to worship this God. There is none like him. is the Alpha and the Omega. Lord, we give you praise tonight. Worship this God. In the midst of his holiness, give him praise tonight. Hallelujah. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. You are God, God from beginning, from beginning to the end. Oh, 
together for Jesus and be comfortably seated. Shortly, we are going to be receiving a welcome word to properly situate our gathering here and to bring this welcome word. Let us put our hands together as we invite the registrar of our university. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. It is my pleasure to welcome you to this special night, a tribute night by Covenant University and Landmark University, in celebration of the life of an icon. I assure you that we are not here to honor to be sorrowful. We are here to celebrate God for a life well spent, a life spent in impact. We're here to testify to the goodness of God, for what God can do in the life of a person and through a person. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here to celebrate not just an ordinary person. We are here to celebrate an icon, someone who is great and big enough to affect the world globally, and someone who is small enough to touch the life of every single person on a personal level. We're here to celebrate the life of Professor Heise Obayo, the second substantive vice chancellor of Covenant University, a longest serving vice chancellor, and someone who has a knack for excellence. We're here to thank God for what God has done in our life. No doubt about it, that left to us, we still want her here. But we want to give God the glory that within the time she spent, she touched the life of every single person, which is a testimony that we are here to give. So we're not here to be sorrowful today. Every single thing we'll be hearing will be the testimony of what God can do through the life of someone who has given herself totally to God. As she would love to refer to herself as a handmaiden of God, and I'm very sure that we all saw it, and God definitely demonstrated a lot of things, even beyond the wildest imagination of everyone. So ladies and gentlemen, my job here today is to welcome you on board for the celebration of the act of God in the life of someone who made herself available to God. Please, can we put our hands together for Jesus? Our hope today is that even as we go ahead to celebrate, and as we share the testimonies of what God has done in our life and through our life, it will serve as an inspiration to every one of us to know that if God can do so much through the life of Professor Isaiah Obayo, God can do the same, and even much more in the life of every one of us seated here today. On this note, I'd like to welcome us to this event. You're welcome. Indeed, our mother ego has served in several capacities. She has been a source of inspiration to we all. And we are confident that indeed heaven today is rejoicing. And to take us in a moment of ministration, let us put our hands together as we invite the faculty and staff choir for their ministration. Hallelujah. With the permission of the Vice Chancellor, sir, we'd like every one of us to rise to our feet as we take this hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness, which is one of the favorite songs of um, Pastor Obaya. Studio, please, could you help us project the lyrics? Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, my Father. 
There is no shadow of turning with thee. No one turning with me. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. No, thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Everybody in the chorus. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning. New mercies I see. Sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Morning by morning. Joy we
indeed has been the faithfulness of God in the life of our mother. She has indeed impacted so many souls, amongst whom are students that are seated in the house here. And to bring the first set of tributes to our great mother, Igu, is none other than the students of this great university. And to anchor that, let us invite the student council to anchor that event. <clears throat> I have dominion, and I take dominion. This is my tribute speech to Professor Isaiah Obayo. It's great to see so many people here to honor a great mentor, fervent Christian, caring mother, and friend, Professor Isaiah Obayo. Despite our different ages, jobs, and interests, it is certain that we all have one thing in common our love and respect for a woman who never rested until the job was done, who taught us to imbibe the core values our university stands for, and who tirelessly groomed leaders. We all know something about her. She took action. People saw the same problems she saw, but few took action like she did to solve them. She saw opportunity where others saw problems. The stories of Covenant and landmark universities cannot be told without her. She gave her all to both institutions as Vice Chancellor, Director ALDC, and the Professor. Above all, a selfless leader, someone we all looked up to. Words cannot convey the vacuum her demise has left. She was so full of life. Thinking back to the DLD classes, I was opportune to be taught by her. I still cannot believe that she's gone. The lessons she taught me and everyone else in her classes would never be forgotten. She led a fulfilled and accomplished life. And though we are sad that she's gone, we know that she's in a better place. We remind ourselves that we will meet again because our hope is in Christ Jesus and our internal home in heaven. She forever lives in our hearts Till our next meeting, may her soul rest in perfect peace. Amen. Thank you. This tribute is by Wefi Alpha, architecture, for, um, architecture postgraduate, and it says, I remember the first day I met Professor Izzy on Bayern personally. I had just prayed for the start of the DLD class when I was in 400 level. She asked me what my name was, and when I told her, she was so fascinated. From that day, I knew we were going to be friends, and as the semesters went by, she always inspired and encouraged me to do better and better. On a very remarkable moment in my life, that was the day she played a short clip from a movie during the LD 221 class, and asked for students to make a speech on what they learned, and I volunteered. As I finished, Professor Izzy on Bayern embraced me because of how much she loved it. She then went on to say it was a speech that would never be forgotten, even went ahead to say that the very people that attended that particular class would see me on world stages. Someday, I will remember that speech I made many years ago at the DLD 221 class, and that set it on a spark in me as to how much she believed in me. Her death came as painful and a shock to me, but her life will always be celebrated. I couldn't believe the news when you had died. I was so convinced that the person who told me had lied, but it was apparently the truth I had to accept. The cold, hard fact that you had actually left. You taught me to dream. You taught me to believe, and it hurt at the thought that you had to leave. There's a time for everything, a time for life, and a time for death. But time will never cease to celebrate you with my every breath. I love you and I miss you. I truly do, and my heart will always have you as a peace. Dear Professor Izzy O'Bayan, I pray your soul rest in perfect peace. Amen. Um, 
This is a tribute by Tolu Afilaka, a 200 level student. Today, I choose not to mourn, but to celebrate a woman of virtue for a life well spent. She lived an exemplary and inspiring life. You showed us what it really means to be called kings and queens, and above all, taught us never to settle for mediocrity. But what I admire most about this great leader was her show of kindness, despite the amount of power bestowed on her. Indeed, you're a true mother. May your beautiful and gentle soul rest in perfect peace. The legacy you left behind is forever in our hearts. This tribute is from Imoi C. Osanyu, a Tony level student. Professor O'Brien was a woman who was known for being strict and kind. When I was only I was only in a direct contact with her in my CMC one to one class. She asked me a question that will forever change my view of myself. She asked me, Who are you? I told her my name. After that, she told me I failed, I'd failed questions. She then proceeded to explain, that the question, explain the question in a new dimension. I will forever be grateful. Even though you will never be there to see Vision 10 20 22, you will be remembered as one of those who worked out to get us there. I have dominion. Okay, my name is Masra Busman, representing international students. If you see tears in my eyes, know that these are not tears of sorrow, tears of defeat, or tears of sadness. But I cry to all of our next generation. God has blessed us with a woman of value, a voice of change, impact, and great words of wisdom. The question troubling me is, will her voice of impact and words of wisdom thrive to the next generation? Will you and me uphold the legacy she has built? When she looks back, we should be proud to call us a fertile ground for her seeds she's been sowing to multiply. Who am I? Perhaps maybe we let's reflect back or even dust our DLD notes or our seminar jottings. Let's embrace her seed, her words of wisdom and preserve them for the next generation. I'm just a foreigner from just a two million populated country who was just privileged to suck from the fountain of greatness. Oh yes, no DLD class would pass without hearing my voice. The microphone we shared. I will continue to voice it and blow the whistle of great exploits and impact. Like in a relay race, I have my button to run this race of trailblazers. Will you join me to impact this world and leave it better than we found it, like Professor did. If so, please help me echo, together we can impact this world and leave it better than we found it. I'm Young Bright Olenkawi, um, a 200 level student from Cameroon. This is my tribute to my tutor, role model, and mentor. I call to mind how Professor Isaac O'Brien led us, then 100 level students, but now 200 level students of Covenant University on the journey to self-discovery. She would always say, self-discovery is the process, it's the process that's similar to peeling off the layers of an onion bulb, layer after layer. And she would say that it's a lifelong process that has stuck with me since then. And every time she comes into class, she always had the habit of saying, no slouching, sit up, sit up. My mates will agree that for every TMC class, there was always this requirement added to our identity, our student identity cards, books, and pens. And that is a mind and a body that is ready to sit up and get a word that will change our lives and impact generations. It's really a sad news to know that she's gone, 
that the impact that she's left behind is one that would never, that cannot be denied. Because personally, I have learned that as a person, I can make a change that would impact generations yet to come. Professor Isaiah O'Brien was that instructor whose vision really amazed me. She noticed almost every spot, from every spot and from every corner of the lecture room, a student, students or a student who looks ob oblivious. She was able to pick all these, to pick movements, to pick people who were losing attention, even while delivering her lecture. It was always amazing to me. And indeed, that causes me to say that she was an eagle indeed, because I learned that eagles had very keen sight and they could focus from a, from a distance. I call her Pathfinder because she helped me find a pathway to self-discovery. I call her Mother Eagle because she demonstrated focus like an eagle and she trained us like a mother. Words will never be enough to describe her impact. We would say in French, adieu, maman, rest in peace, see you at resurrection. Thank you. From the words of the student base, indeed we are confident that our mother egos indeed has raised a new generation of leaders. For those words of inspiration, let us put our hands together for Jesus. We shall now be calling on the Landmark University alumni to give their tribute. Landmark University. Let's put our hands together for them. Hi, I'm Dominion. Please permit me to adopt all protocols. We're here to celebrate a legend and a mother of many. No amount of words we share today or tribute to say will totally describe what she has been to us. But what we can do, even when we have few to say, is to share the little we can. So permit me as I share this few words of what mommy was to us. She was a legend because of her legacies. The demise was unbelievable to us at first. We watched as minutes turned to hours and hours turned to days. To hear counter news, but to no avail. If tears could bring you back, we would call a garden of pathfinders to do so. You were an epitome of excellence, an enigma of strength. An Amazon of beauty, a pride to true motherhood, an avalanche of wisdom, and an echelon of character. You are not dead because the virtuous character and wisdom you imparted into us still lives in us all. Your life was well spent and were testimonials of your impact. Our success, our celebrations, and our impacts are proofs that you are alive because that was your desire. Our joy is that you lived for Christ and you are now resting at the bosom of the master. Farewell, our role model, mother, heroine, mentor, and coach. Adieu, our great leader. Thank you very much. I told her when she was the VC, that she was VC, meaning very caring, very compassionate, and very considerate. She was indeed a mentor, a mother, and an inspiration. She stood up as VC, and all the men, including staff, faculty, students, everyone stood up when she stood up. 
And that was when I was made to understand that God does not care about your gender when he has an agenda for you. She was one woman that made me to realize that you can be anything you want to be at any time, anywhere, any day, if you don't live your life anyhow. She was indeed an inspiration, a mentor, and a mother. She believed so much in the youth and the ability to restore the dignity of the black race. No wonder she became the director of the African Leadership Development. Even as I wish she stayed longer to see her investment in us, yield greater fruit, which are success stories, I'm sure she is in a better place because indeed she left a legacy that we all can't see. Rest in peace, Professor Isaiah Obaya. You'll forever be in our hearts. Miss you, Professor Isaiah Obaya. We have a short clip just to round up to be done in a few minutes. Please kindly bear with us from one of us. Thank you. Studio, please help us. Thank you. That took your body. Not your smile. Not your smile that incited us to form you. Not your memory. That has been gently pressed into our hearts by your words. I chatted a peaceful heart where anyone who cared to listen. Walk tall. Bow, lean, love, laugh. Be intentional about your actions, what you say, and how you say it. You embellish our lives. Flooded us with knowledge, but it was still a lot we came to you. We are a warning. So I speak for every privileged palm the locked hands in introduction with yours. Where heaven leaps what will fail to speak of the grace to you being for how you molded me. For teaching me that work was worship to God. For being there for every one of us, regardless of your impossible schedule. For being more than a vice chancellor, a professor, a mother friend, mentor, for being a monument of love a thousand tongues can attest to. There remains only one thoroughfare to eternity, and this you bought it, to a place of rest, to a place where time is frozen in its existence, a place where darkness can no longer find you, a place of light, though the sun that arises now sets, a place where you can find the rest, a place of peace like Christ promised, a place of endless hallelujah and hope. Our hearts are heavy, our countenance is sad, but we are beyond comforted. Oh, we are glad, knowing that you are with the Father, that you are with the saints, watching from above right now, giving you an ever-pleasant smile. This is not goodbye. We will meet again in our new bodies. But until then, let it be known that your legacy lives on, that we love you, but heaven loves you more. Indeed, her legacy still lives. From Landmark University, she has indeed made her marks in the sands of time. We return back to the base where it all began, Covenant University. And on these notes, it's my pleasure to invite the Covenant University alumni for their presentation. All protocols duly observed. We thank God for a night like this, where we have the privilege to honor the one we call Mother Ego here at Covenant University. And um, we are going to give our tribute. I'm not here to mourn, we're here to give glory to God for the impact that we have seen made happen in our lives. And so, don't be scared about the number. She gave it to lots of children, so this is just to represent the thousands of children that she gave birth to. And so, I'm going to give opportunity to four of us um, to give tributes, one minute each, then I'll read 
what we put together in a script on behalf of the entire alumni Covenant University. So I might call on my Wagbola to give his tribute. Thank you. The Vice Chancellor, all protocols duly observed. I have plenty to say, but I've just summarized it in this short tribute for her. This moment brings with the heavy realization that you will no longer be present with us. You have been an inspiration for all of us who had the fortune of coming into your ambit. This loss is inexpressible. We bid farewell to you with a heavy heart, lamenting in the void your death shall live in all of us. You will always be remembered and loved. You will be remembered for the amazing qualities you embodied. Your death has left us with nothing to hold on to. Now that you have left us for a heavenly abode, we can only hope and pray that your soul rests in peace. This farewell is not just a farewell for the kind of person you were, but, every, but also for everything you stood for. Thank you. I met Professor Obayo, September 2005. It was my first variety night as a freshman in Covenant University. I was moved by the excellence and the profound inspiration that flowed in the room in, that night. After the event, I went by her car, and when the ca crowd had dispersed, I walked up to her, and I said, good evening, ma. And that was all I could say. She saw my numbing amazement, and she reached, she reached out with her right hand and held my cheek. She encouraged me, prayed for me, and wished me the very best in my sojourn as a student in Covenant University. And that marked the be beginning of our relationship in Covenant University. We became better friends when I had the opportunity to serve in Project One Million Souls. Her office was ever open to us, and she always met our request. She was never too busy to attend our events and gave, up, gave, gave us all of the encouragement that she could. She taught us in TMC, and in each TMC class, you will see her profound desire to want to impact the world. And that I know that she did. She did in the lives of an innumerable number of people who can now call her friend, mother, mentor, and leader. And so we do not mourn today. We do not mourn. Rather, we celebrate a life that was well lived, a life of excellence, a life of courage, a life of faith, loyalty, motherhood, kindness, empathy, impact, leadership, honor, and perhaps above all, servanthood. A servant to God, her generation, and generations to come. We do not mourn, we celebrate. Praise God. I met Professor Obanye October 21st, 2002, after I was rejected by Professor Izedomi from getting admitted into the Department of Human Resource. And she said, I'm sorry, uh, he said, I'm sorry, our quota is full. Would you want to meet that, young, that lady and ask, she's, what, she's in another college, she can offer you a course. And then I walked up to Prof. And she said, okay, um, we have a number of courses. She mentioned like three. And I said, I'm sorry, I can't take any. Do you have any other one? Because I can't come all the way from Ibado to take any of these courses. And she looked at me and said, okay, we have human development. So I nodded and I said, okay, human development, human resource, I'll take that one. She said, all right, talk to the man that was Dr. Abimbola then. And then that was how we started. 100 levels, she would always tell me, don't ever sit at the back. You come and sit in front of the class. And I could not escape, I could not hide, because Prof would always look out for me. And she always says, your skirt's long enough, that dress is too short. Even if others wear that, you can't wear that. She has sent me like twice back to my hostel to go and change my dress, just because she felt 
anyone else can get away with it, but not you. We graduated, and she was a woman that was quite intriguing, because for me, she was a woman out of... She, 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 I lived in awe, because I wondered, what kind of a woman is this? And somewhere in my heart, after our graduation, I just nursed in my heart to have the privilege of working with her. And 2014, January, I received a call, and she said, would you still want to come? I said, yes, ma. I said, okay, so we'll see shortly. And then I resumed. During one of our moments at the office, I recalled we were actually eating a plate of rice from her kitchen. Unfortunately, we had only one plate, so we had to eat from the same plate. And for me, I felt that was my moment. And I said, Ma, can I ask you a question? She said, okay, go ahead. I said, I've always wondered how you got to be like this. What's your motivation? She told me a lot of things, but to conclude it all, she said, Maureen, you can always ask yourself, is that the best that you can do? And I've always held on to that and lived my life with that. And I always ask myself, is this the best that I can offer? I am glad today because she has gone to be with the Lord. But amongst it all, she has joined the cloud of witnesses. And if there is anything clouds of witnesses do, they cheer us on. She has left a legacy. Her words are still ringing in our hearts. And I know that day by day, for all of us that are connected with her, we will still always hear her voice, because she will always say, don't give up, I know you can do it. And today I say to the rest of the family, she has birth in a thousand of all of us, a legacy that can never die, because we have a legacy and we will live on, we will cheer on, and we will look out for her voice, because we know she will always say, don't give up, I know you will do it. Thank you. Thank you, Sas. Thank you, Ma. Uh, this evening, I would like to just uh, thank God for the life of our mother, who I had the privilege of uh, learning under her and also serving alongside her. And so I would just mention a few areas her lessons of leadership has impacted me. She led with designing heart. She could design raw gold, even when it didn't matter. I recall 2003 as a year two student of architecture, leaving the studio at about 10.30 p.m. in the night, and uh, the dean of the college then met me on the staircase, and she saw my very sketchy, unlikely work, and she took interest in me, not knowing where I would be or what I would even you know, do. From then, she took me to her husband, and I became a son to the family. And, uh, she saw in me at that point, talent, raw gold. She led with a personal touch. At the birth of her first son, she was there at the hospital to receive her first son with us. As I left the house this morning, the frame she gave me as a gift still hangs on the wall. She was a leader that even if there are thousands of persons, she could spot and keep you right in her heart. She led with fine needs and excellence. Prof would tell me this building is not yet ready. This hall is not fixed. This chair is not okay. This and this she led with detail. She was a leader that knew everything. She knew about the laboratories, knew about the hostels. She would walk with us for hours around the hostels, around the campus. She would tell you about the shrubs by the curbs, she was that detailed. She led by example untiringly. We would walk late till night, 1 a.m., at times 2 a.m., getting up very early. She drove us and drove us. She was indeed the vanguard of the covenant vision. She wasn't apologetic about this vision. She stood in battle as a general, with the might and the strength of a rock. She's a mother forever in our heart. We celebrate our legacies of leadership. And I know that um, standing here is uh, a cluster of lives that will leave the legacy. God bless Professor Bayon. Praise the Lord.
Um, I came in contact with um, Professor Bayon in 2013 when I was deployed to her office as the executive assistant when she was the EDS. Um, mom drilled me. <laughs> she brought out the best out of me. She didn't say anything bad in what I was doing. But what she kept telling me then was, don't see, always see this work as worship unto God. And she asked me, what do you mean by worship unto God? When you worship God, you worship him with the, with the whole of your heart and your soul. And um, that's what has been driving me up till now. She's, she's made me a good administrator and I'm proud of my job. My success story will never be complete without her years from now. I really miss her and I pray that Holy Spirit will come for the family on all sides in Jesus' name. Mother Ego, like we used to call her, um, in my mind, I see her as a legend. She's a woman of honor, you can't doubt that. My first contact with Professor Isaiah O'Brien was um, May 10th, 2003. That was my interview panel, entering in as a 100-level student. And we had Professor Isaiah O'Brien, we had our Vice Chancellor, Professor A. Atairo, we had Pastor Macaulay. And she asked me a question, Tell me about yourself. I've never had that kind of question before because I responded by answering with my name. She said, no, I didn't ask what's your name. I said, tell me about yourself. What does that mean? I never thought of that before. And now we started 100 level and she gave us an assignment. I've never written so much in my life when I got an assignment to write 6,000 words. And what's the assignment? What is life? What's been of that? You know, <laughs> like, Stephen, don't just exist, live. What's the difference? So she gave us certain things that transformed our lives completely. And like we've heard from the feedback, because time will not permit to harvest from every one of us here, but we know that she's alive. Just this evening, I was listening to a video of her talking, and to me, she's alive, you know. And so our mother ego still lives, and for that, we give God all the glory. Now I'm going to read this, which was written by the president of the alumni on behalf of all members of the CU alumni, and I read. To the mother ego, the queen mother, it will be nearly impossible to capture the essence of your person in a capsule of black inked fonts, splattered over degrading materials such as this. You are the kind whose names and fame shall be engraved in tablets of gold with silver fonts and dotted with droplets of the rarest precious metals. And when the craftsman is done with the scribbling, we bury such treasure in every heart that celebrates today your life and times. Mother Ego, you were the quit essence of our aspirations. As rough infants, you saw something in us and called us kings and queens, even before we understood its meaning. We were often enamored by your voice and speech and dreamed of the day when, like you, the world will pay attention to us with such rapt attention as we deliver our lines with confidence backed by depths of wisdom. Often you spoke gloomily of the heights we must command. Given the great care with which you implanted each feather in our tender and fragile wings, every word of yours was spoken with great care, rebuking, chiding, mending, healing, soothing, and restoring each eagle in waiting. We found joy in musing about your comments, mimicking the nuances of your speeches, even as we found the consistency of your hairstyle perplexing. You filled our spaces completely, and you were just what we needed in our sojourn here. Today, we are your prophecies fulfilled, your battles won, your testimonies sealed, and your glories won. We are the crowns you will, be, you will cast before your maker in sovereign worship when you approach his throne for your reward. You are the agent for our inspiration and the fuel for our fire. You gave us the courage to march on in faith. You filled our quiver with God's own polished and sharpened arrows and shot them all for glory. Dear Professor Isaac O'Brien, you are alive in our hearts of the alumni of Covenant University. It is impossible to miss what is still alive and near. The very shock of your departure can never corrode the ever-present memory of your love and care. Though we have stories about you to tell in many ways today, we will share them with Joshua and Tulowani in the years to come of how you fragmented all of us and deposited in each of us. Thank you for your life and for setting the course of flights for the community of eagles. As we saw and color the skies with the graces of our Heavenly Father, we do it in honor of you and the prayers you have poured out on us. Rest well. May your legacy be sung to a thousand generations 
till Jesus returns. God bless you, man. I want to invite Professor Lukoni as he gives his tribute on behalf of the Yatra program. Then we leave. Good evening, everyone. Uh, it will be so ungrateful of me or on behalf of the Yatra people not to say these few words. She was a blessing to us. And I remembered I first met her on the 1st of February, year 2005, when I came into Covenant University. She was on the interview panel. And you've seen all of these gentlemen and ladies. They were the undergraduate students as of those days, while we were the postgraduate students. So and I felt where I seated that it would be so ungrateful not to you know, say a few words you know, to appreciate what she did while she was here. I remember when we started our postgraduate program, it was as if nothing was going to be happening. And I remember I had a colleague there who I called. And I said, it's like things is not really happening. What should we do? And I thought of myself, within myself, I said, let's walk up to our professor, Professor Isaac O'Brien. And we went to our office. And when we got to her, we said, this is the challenge that we had. And our program is like not really happening. And I said, we should not worry that we should just go back to our office and something will happen. And the next week, I tell us our program began. And before we knew it, in the next year, we are done with the first degree and even we moved on to the next one. I remember for many of the faculties who are here will also appreciate that with me, that every of your birthday, she has a card, you know, done. Not to be typed, but kind of handwritten and she sends to all of us. She will remember your birthday even when we were raising our children, when you give birth, she would just come around with some persons along with her, and she come to your own house personally and just rejoice with you, and she drops something to say how much she cares. I love her so much in my heart because she was so caring. And I also remembered when I was away in the United States for my PhD research, she would always send a word of note to just say, how is your program coming? How is everything going? I said, everything is well. Because I remembered she approved you know, my leave of absence to embark on my postgraduate program in the United States. And when I returned, even to do my defense then, I remembered there were some things that I needed to sort out because my advice over and this, you have to add to what you have done. And there were some practicals that I need to actually do again. And I remember there was fund you know, in question. There is something to do that project. And I went up to her, she said, David, do you need to go back to the state to go and do that? I said, no, ma, I'm going to complete that part, you know, here. And interestingly, there was a document that was need to be signed. She didn't wait to go back to her office to sign a document that involves a lot of fun to be given. Right in her car, right in her car, she just took the document and signed for what fun needed to be released. I was amazed. I was touched because another leader could say, go meet my secretary, or go wait for me, or go do anything. But right there in the car, in front of CDS building, she signed that paper. And I remember the last assignment I did with her on ICAD platform, the last ICAD that just concluded. We worked so closely. I was just like, go and put this, go and add this, go and add this. Even at times I get to the people in the corporate affairs, I say, mama just said, this had to be completed, and they were like, I said, you know her for her perfection. Touch of excellence. And I remember when she also invited me to be on the platform of the Total Man Concept class. I was like, ma, I'm in engineering, why are you bringing me into this again? I said, because I know that you have something in you. I remember the book she gave me some time ago, 360 degree leadership. She said, David, there is a leader in you. Then take this book and read. So when the TMC class actually came, on board, I just reflect to remember to say, Mama, <laughs> you gave me that book those time. And also, I want to appreciate her. I don't know, she's somewhere <laughs> up there. And the, the thing that we can only say is to say God has actually used her even to be a blessing to many. So on behalf of the people who came on the young academic training program of those days, we want to say, Adieu, Mama, we we'll love you. And the children that she has left, I know she has impacted it so, so much in the lives of the children, and it's evident in the kind of style they live. And I pray 
God of all comfort will comfort you on all sides in the name of Jesus. On this note, I say thank you. And Miss Soul rests in perfect peace. Amen. As the CEO alumni go back to their seat, one word I picked, don't just exist, live. Indeed, our mother ego might have exited this terrestrial realm, but this is the consolation we have, that she still lives in us. For that presentation from the alumni, let us put our hands together for Jesus. At this junction, we'll just take a pause as we look at an inspirational video that has been put together. Let us sit back and reflect on the life of our mother ego. Africa has a very grim picture painted in terms of her current situation. Just as a great man defined education, but it's not about filling a bucket, it's about lighting a fire. It was also Napoleon Bonaparte who said that leaders are dealers in hope. Seated here tonight is the next generation who would bring hope to the continent of Africa.
true greatness is a function of impact. Our mother eagle has impacted us in so many ways. And at this junction, it's my privilege to invite the Covenant University team for their presentation, their inspirational solo, the alumni. Let us put our hands together for them as they make their presentation. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Encourage someone at this moment. In times like this, we seek strength from above, from the God of strength, the hope giver, the life giver, the one who's Love overflows. You are my strength, strength like no other, strength like no other. Reaches. Oh, you are. 
God that reaches to me. Like no other, strength like no other, so glad that it reaches to me. put our hands together for Jesus. Indeed, the joy of the Lord is our strength. At this point, I'll be inviting members, some members of the Covenant University Management that have worked with her to make their tributes. And I'll be calling on two persons in person of Professor C.K. Ayo and Dr. Tayo George. Let us put our hands together for them as they come to make their plea. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. This is about my 16th year in the university. I joined in the year 20, 2003, became a member of Senate 2004, and since that time, I've had the privilege and opportunity of working with our dear mother. She was the pioneer chair faculty support program while I was the vice chair. Under her leadership as the vice chancellor, I was appointed the pioneer director of academic planning. And I had the opportunity of traveling with her within and outside Nigeria by reason of mentorship. All her contemporaries and mentors became mine. Ladies and gentlemen, we have learned from the Chancellor that there is no self-made star. But God has positioned some individuals designed to groom you to stardom. Suffices to say at this point that the trajectory of my career will have been drastically altered if I have not had the opportunity of working and learning at the feet of Professor Isaac Obayo. On one of our trips to, the, to South Africa, it was, the invitation was meant for vice chancellors alone all over the world. A courageous and fearless leader she was wrote to the European Union the importance of Covenant University and, there, and where, why there must be two representatives from here. It was granted. We were there together. CK are you in the midst of other vice chancellors. She spoke at length during the meeting and noticed that I was just watching. 
Ayo, raise your hand. Tell them about Covenant University. I said, Ma, I agree completely with all they have said. There's nothing more to say. Okay, say other things that we are doing in Covenant University. I said, Ma, maybe next time. She raised her hand, collected the mic, and handed it over to me. In the midst of the audience. Well, I stood up, said the little I could. I knew I didn't represent her well, but she still congratulated me. Well done. Yes, you have done well. This is how we have to keep telling them about the little things we are doing. And one thing I've took home since that time, working with Professor Isaac Obayo, you must live ready. If you are working in the same institution, the ethics, the ethos of the university must be at your fingertips. Ladies and gentlemen, like I said, that her friends and mentors became mine. I know right in the audience here, we have some individuals that paid their ways from the United States of America to be part of this. Uh, the Vice Chancellor, permit me, I have Professor Ogi Okumabua from here. Sir Rice, let's see you. Thank you, sir. I met him when I was still Director of Academic Planning, but the friendship continued even well until the time I became the Vice Chancellor. I know by 3 p.m. today, Professor Patience up and open called me that she was on her way to the guest house. I wouldn't know if she's present right here, but again, she paid her ways from the United, uh, from the yeah, United States of America to be part of this. I know, Vice Chancellor, sir, you must have received condolence messages from the National Universities of University, National Universities Commission. The same thing because of the way she took me. When, my, when I became DAPU, she took me individually to the various offices. They equally called me, taking me for a son. Professor Okebukola called from the United States of America when he had, and still commiserate with me, that is to tell you the person we are celebrating today. Ladies and gentlemen, it is axiomatic that Professor Isaiah Obanyo is a quintessential administrator, a courageous and fearless leader, a servant leader with finest and the maiders touch a bridge builder, a pathfinder, and a mentor par excellence. The corollary to this is that she demystified university administration, provided a template for developing and managing world-class universities, not only in Nigeria, but in Africa in general. How are the mighty falling? Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Obanyo proved to the whole world that no profession or appointment is an exclusive preserve of a particular gender. She was a paragon of beauty with a very impressive and intimidating, intimidating power of oratory. How are the mighty falling? No doubt she lived a fulfilled life, short but eventful, short but impactful, short but productive and remarkable. May her gentle soul rest in perfect peace. Ladies and gentlemen, we are consoled with the word of God in the book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, blessed are the dead 
which die in the Lord from henceforth, yea, see the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Rest in peace, my mentor. Finally, to the children, to Luani and Joshua, the book of Isaiah 65, 24 says, And it shall come to pass that before you call, I will answer. And while you are yet speaking, I will hear. It is my prayer that God will console and comfort you, meet you at the points of your needs, send help unto you, be your father and your mother in Jesus' name. It is well with you in Jesus' name. Thank you. I have dominion, and I take dominion, standing on already established protocols. I like to crave the indulgence of the vice chancellor to please permit me to invite other members of the faculty women advance to join me on this platform. Please, members of the faculty women advance of Covenant University here seated, please can you join me on this platform? Thank you. While they come, at this solemn assembly this evening, so much has been said about Professor Isaiah Obayo, our own mentor and the coordinator of the Faculty Women Advance of Covenant University. It was 11 years ago, precisely in the month of February, that Professor Isaiah O'Brien, this handmaiden of God, as inspired by God, came up with the Faculty Women Advance. We stand here this evening representing over 200 members of the Faculty Women Advance a group, a platform she created to add value to the lives of women. A group she inspired so much to give women a chance, a voice, to be the best that they could be. As it has been said over and over again, we are not here to mourn, but to rejoice in a life well spent of our dear mother ego. Professor Isaac Obanyo reached out to everyone, male, female, young and old, even the children from the testimony we had this evening. I came across Professor Isaac Obanyo some 13 years ago, precisely on the 1st of February, 2006, when I resumed at Covenant University. And ever since then, there was this attraction. I had always wanted to be like her, and I believe every woman here, if I have opportunity to give them the microphone, they have one positive thing or the other to say about her, as we have all witnessed this evening. Under her watch and leadership as a coordinator and the initiator of the Faculty Women Advance, she ensured that women give their best. Women have a voice. She was uncomfortable being the only member of Senate as a woman who was also the chair of Senate during her tenure as a vice chancellor. And she came up with this group. I want to this evening deeply appreciate all the past vice chancellors 
and our current vice chancellors for being gender friendly. Thank you, sir, for giving women a chance in this university, even in your appointments. It was January last year when over 10 women of faculty women advanced, 10 members, were appointed into various leadership positions. And she called me as her deputy coordinator to connect with these women by writing to them to appreciate them, to congratulate them. And that was not enough. She ensured that we gave each of these persons a letter. And for the three female professors that were newly promoted, she also ensured that we reached out to them, not only with a letter of congratulation, but a package in terms of a book gift. Also talking about advancing women, Professor Aizu Obanyo ensured that she carried everyone along in all of her programs. I remember March 8, 2018 was the International Women's Day. There was a program she organized to celebrate that day, and she also ensured that women were represented from this platform. And she also came up with another initiative. We had our first female inaugural lecturer. I'm talking about Professor Taiwo Abioye deliver her inaugural lecture in April. Professor Aizu Obanyo, under her leadership as a coordinator of the faculty women advance, also ensured that we reached out, we celebrate other women, we celebrate the success stories of others. She came up with this idea that we should package beautiful gifts for every inaugural lecturer, especially the females, and that has come to stay. I also recall that in the month of May, precisely celebrating the Children's Day. It fell on a Sunday, but Friday penultimate, she led the faculty women of this university to celebrate the Children's Day with the children at the Kingdom Heritage Model School right here in Canaan land. We didn't just go like that. We read a book to these children, we interacted with them, and we left with a gift of um, a horsepower air conditioner for their library. And in the month of June, I also recall, she's talking about celebrating others, celebrating the achievement of others. Professor Aizu Obanyo initiated a roundtable session to celebrate the first and the 10th female president of Harvard University. I'm talking about Catherine um, Flew Drip. I can't recall the other names. We had that roundtable session in ALDC, and someone among us said humorously, we have another Catherine, another Harvard president in our midst, that we should actually be celebrating Professor Izzy Obanyo at that event. I guess that was prophetic, and I look forward to us having a roundtable session in, in honor of this great woman of inestimable value. Professor Aizu Obanyo connected with the students from the testimony we heard this evening, so much so that she instituted the need for us to reach out to them, the best graduating female students from this platform. On an annual basis during convocation, the faculty women advance also reach out by awarding gifts to the best graduating female students across the colleges. That was the idea and the initiative of Professor Aizu Obanyo. As if that was not enough, she wanted faculty women advance to be replicated, if possible, across all the universities in Nigeria. And she called me one day and said, Tayo, it's high time we go and do this in Landmark University. She threw her weight behind us, and thanks to the management of Covenant University and the management of Landmark University, VC, sir, I recognize you, gave us all the needed support to inaugurate the faculty women advance at Landmark University. I could remember, thank you, the excitement, the joy she expressed when we returned from that journey. Even while on that trip, Professor Aizu Obanyo would call, have you arrived? I hope everything is okay. She reached out to every person. Time will fail me 
to go on and on and on to begin to mention all that she represents to us in the faculty women of Covenant University. But quickly, I want to touch on these three aspects. Professor Aizu Obayon was a quintessential icon, it has been said. She was a leader of inestimable value, an exemplary leader par excellence. One lesson I learned from Professor Aizu Obayon is the fact that she would respond to every mail, SMS, in writing, by memo, no matter how long it took her. That was an exceptional quality in spite of her very busy schedule. Professor Aizu Obayon know every family by their names. She will ask you about your spouse, your children, how are you doing? Professor Aizu Obayon will go out of her way, just like one of us testified this evening. When I had my last baby 10 years ago, she sent provisions. She will send letters on your birthday. I still have some of those letters and some of those gifts. We can go on and on and on and on. There was one dream she had that was unfulfilled, and I'd like to use this platform to please appeal to the management of Covenant University. Professor Aizu Obayon, in, in the process of advancing women, desire to have children's center. We were working on that proposal. She desire that faculty women have enough time for their career while they're able to balance and work and family. And so please, I would like to use this medium to appeal that that project should be seen to the logical end. That dream will not die in Jesus' name to have a crutch or a play group for the children of faculty and staff of this university. To us in Faculty Women Advance, our mother eagle is not dead. She has only gone to be with the Lord. We are consoled in the fact that the legacy she left behind will be upheld. We are consoled in the fact that we, today in Covenant University, we have more female professors than ever. We are consoled in the fact that she has mentored so many of us and her dreams will not die in Jesus' name. Once again, I'd like to enjoin the children that they are not alone. Mommy lived a good life and the family members, Toluani and Joshua. Mommy was a great woman. Rest in peace, great mentor. Adieu, Mother Ego. God bless you all. Thank you, Mas. Thank you. In the words of the landmark university alumni, the VC, she was very caring. At this junction, it's my privilege to invite the landmark university vice chancellor for his tribute address. Let us put our hands together. My own vice chancellor, sir, I can feel you. All other protocols duly observed. My personal tribute is on social media. And this has been assessed globally. And we have had overwhelming comments. And so tonight, I'm going to be reading the tribute from landmark community, from the management, from faculty, from staff, and from students. Of course, from Umwara community. To live is Christ, and to die is gain. It is in consonance with the scripture 
that we at Landmark understand your passage into glory, our immediate past vice chancellor, Professor Aize Obayim. Though shocked and pained by your sudden exit from this world to eternity with God, we are consoled that you are resting with your creator after your impactful sojourn on earth. Our tears, though overflowing, are glistening in the light of faith and hope of glory in Christ Jesus, our Lord. For your departure to the eternal home where Christ reigns forever. Our dear beloved S.Y. Vice Chancellor, Landmark community cannot forget in a hurry your contributions to our present development. We wish you had lived more years to further inspire and impart our contest. But in total submission to the will of God, we obtain solace in the spiritual assurance that you are not dead but asleep in the bosom of your heavenly Father. Having lived with proof in Christ Jesus, living legacies too numerous to be forgotten and too palpable to be denied at the hand of your earthly race, including your foundational role to the visionary drive and attainment of landmark, you deserved to be celebrated and not mourned. We therefore celebrate you, your iconic contributions and legacies in the landscape of our university education, especially in landmark contests. The amazing landmark university community will miss you till we meet on the perfect day. Sleep on our amazing Vice-Chancellor. So I cherish thou rugged cross. I will click to the rugged cross. And I change it someday for a crown. Adieu. Professor Aize, N.T. Obayan. Blessed be God for giving us a mother that has served her time. At this juncture, I would like us to all rise as we invite the Vice Chancellor, our host of this occasion, to bring his word of tribute. You may please be seated. I would like to give a tribute on behalf of the Covenant University community, the faculty, the staff, the students of Covenant University. But before I do, I'd just like to recall briefly the time I first met Professor Haize Obanya. I met her in service. And by service, I mean doing the work of God. It was drawing one of the very early sacrificial labor we used to have. The hostels were just concluded. 
and we had the opportunity to clean the hostels. That was the first time I met her. Little did I know then that God will use her mightily in my career. At this time, I was saying, I just returned from Russia as a fresh postdoc. And I met her again the second time, like a lot of people here have said, during an interview session when I was coming into Covenant University. While a senior lecturer, she gave me my first opportunity at leadership in the university as the head of the Department of Electrical and Information Engineering and trusted me enough to go and represent her at an international event in Abuja. I was then representing the vice chancellor. Little did I know that she was prepping me for the office. Then came 2012, when I was privileged to be the Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic under the humble leadership of Professor Charles Corey de Hayo. After that tenure, a call was made, and as God will have it again, this very gentle lady was on the panel that interviewed me for this current position that I hold now as the Vice Chancellor of Covenant University. An incident occurred in the very early days of my careers in Covenant University. I applied for a trip and it was denied. I'd never written a response memo that fast in my life. And I sent it in to her, my vice chancellor. Her response was very brief. My decision remains the same. The calmness of that response did something in my life. Because the next time I saw her, she said, Dr. Atayero, next time you write a memo, leave it down. Take some time to reflect over it before you send it in. And I wasn't stupid. I understood what that meant. That means I could have queried you. I could have fired you. But I'm a mother. I love you. So I will train you. I read a tribute from the community in honor of my mentor, Professor Haize Obaya. The tradition of funeral oration has its origin in ancient Greeks. When Pericles, in about 450 BC, spoke at the funeral of fallen soldiers who paid the supreme sacrifice at the Peloponnesian Wars. It is in this connection that we present these lines to bid farewell to an amazing Amazon, an amiable mentor, a committed mother, a relentless builder, a loyal disciple, a quintessential leader, a daughter of Zion, and as we have heard over and over today, the handmaiden of the Most High God. What shall I say about the inimitable Professor Haize Obayan and the Odyssey here on Canaan grounds? What shall I tell the cloud of witnesses about her pact with destiny? and the color she brought to the context of Covenant University. What else is there to say about her undiluted passion for excellence far beyond the fragrance 
of the Halapastor jar, she did not spare on her assignment. Should I also illustrate her professional and practical base in counseling, psychology, and leadership development studies, which she brought to bear in assembling the critical workforce for the university she presided over? Is there any wonder then that she had a glorious accent to the lofty eyes in a field as a mother ego? Apart from her training, tutelage on forays of exploits in Benin, Ilori, Scotland, and England, you speak about her solid contributions at Covenant University between 2002 and 2019. She was also very visible at the highest level of ministry leadership, having served as the Education Secretary of the Living Faith Church Commission. She had the testimony of the very few people in the world to have served as the Vice Chancellor of two separate universities in her lifetime. Talking, of course, about Covenant University and Landmark University. Within the context of Covenant University, she held the record of the longest serving chief executive for eight critical foundation years. I dare put on record today that all the prowess and everything we're seeing about Covenant University today can be attributed to the solid foundation she laid for us as an institution. She presided over the School of Postgraduate Studies, then the College of Human Development, and most recently, the African Leadership Development Center. She raised the platforms for excellence in whatever capacity she served. She crafted the rubrics and tenets for the operations of the top-notch committees and propelled our institutions to the pinnacles of excellence. Though Professor Isaiah Obaya was not given to seeking validation, our work bore testimony to our diligence and brought her to the paved platforms of the Hall of Fame. Within the context of Covenant University, she held that record that she served longest she was voted the best vice chancellor of all private universities in Nigeria in the year 2006. She was honored by the Institute of Strategic Studies of Nigeria in 2007. In 2011, the Southern University A&M College USA conferred on her the prestigious leadership award. In that same year, the Alumni Association of the University of Nigeria, Hunsuka, bestowed on her the Distinguished Diamond Award for Excellence. She received too many awards that time will not permit me to mention here. Professor Haizi Obaya was highly sought after for conference speaker, as keynote and plenary presentations for both national and international audiences. For example, in 2010, she spoke at the European Union Africa Summit on governance and management in Cape Town, South Africa. Professor Obaya walked this path as predestinated steps as a teacher of teachers, a professor of professors, the vice chancellor of vice chancellors, an uncommon achiever, an accomplished daughter of Africa, an exemplary daughter of Zion, and the hands maiden of the Most High God. Like we have heard over and over today, this definitely is not a moment for tears. It is a time to celebrate as we return all the glory to God in our season of dominion for a life 
well spent. Good night, our leader, our mentor, our dear Professor Obaya. Thank you. We may be comfortably seated. Service, service indeed to humanity. Our mother eagle has been the hallmark of service to humanity. At this junction, even as we draw this night to a close, I would like to invite the ministration from the CU Choir, even as we draw this night to a close. CU Choir. someone who trusts in God, someone who believes that he is and is able to do all that we ask or think, someone who knows that the peace of God reigns in our hearts. Come on, someone just open up your mind today, open up your heart today and allow his peace to reign in our heart. For we trust in him because we know he can do everything that we ask. He alone is God. Everybody's moving And everyone is going somewhere With everything they're trying Just to make it To a place where I am not there But when the noise is over A still small voice you will hear I hope that you believe me When I tell you That I will handle all of your cares Just wait on me Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Just trust and know that I am God. I'm in control. And by what stand about 
and easy to comprehend. Oh, cause there are days when it seems we're going nowhere fast. Trust your faith to show you the truth. Oh, my status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. My status is changing, yeah, but say. My status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way. I'm on my way to better days. My status is changing. My status is changing. My status is changing. There's no more decline. There's no more decline. I'm on my way. I'm on my way to better days. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. My status is changing. No more decline. No more decline. I'm on my way. Yeah. I'm on my way to better days. My status is changing. Yes, it is. Oh, oh. My status is changing. There's no more decline. No, no more decline. I'm on my way. I'm on my way to better days. status of our mother eagle has changed from terrestrial to celestial to still take us further in this atmosphere of ministration let us invite the classical choir
Weep not, weep not, for the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. Indeed, it has been a great night, and this night will not be complete without hearing the word from the Lord via his chosen verse. At this junction, may we all rise as we invite the chaplain, Covenant University, to bring the word. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for tonight, your good hand of blessing upon everyone, and most importantly, our sister, our mother, our friend, our colleague, your daughter, who is rested in your bosom. We bless the Lord for this day, and we thank you for a life well spent. Blessed be your name, O God. We thank you for all the words that have come tonight from everyone. Lord, we ask that your grace and your help will not depart from anyone. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Please, can we put our hands together for Jesus and we may take our seat. I want to deeply uh, also recognize the presence of our Vice Chancellor, both of Covenant University and Landmark University, and all members of management and everyone here tonight. We give God praise for the life of our mother. and. Um, Thank God for everything that has been said tonight. I will just do three things. One is my encounter with this great woman of God just took place the last six months. I'm sure I should be a youngest baby. Why do I say so? I came into Covenant 6th of August last year. And um, after about two or three months, many things were going on in my heart, and I needed to talk with her. I've known her from afar off as the Vice Chancellor of Covenant University and also of Landmark. But coming into this fold, I admired the way I have seen her do things. And like my usual self, I always want to have interactions because someone said, you are the same person in the next five years only for the books you read and the people you meet. So the people you meet have import and impact on your life. So I said, Ma, please, I would like to see, I would like to have an audience with you to come to your office and see you. No sooner than I understood, Professor Bayan was in my office. I was shocked and I jumped off my feet. And I said, Ma, I said I was coming to your office. He said, the chaplain, I'm here in your office. And she sat down with me. We had a very long chat, very fruitful one. And what shocked me at the end of that conversation was this. It led one to her rushing to her office to buy a book for me, the Seven uh, Mountain Mantle. That's the first book she gave to me. And while she was going, she just crashed out on the ground and said, pray for me. I followed her to kneel down on the ground and said, let us agree together. That fired too many things into my spirit, man in that office. I knelt down with Professor Bayon in the month of October and prayed with her in that office. Like everyone gave their testimony, my birthday was 26th of September, the same date that the Covenant University was tagged in the world ranking. And no sooner than that, a letter reached my office with another book. 
what a great woman with a great heart. For why the number of us who have known her for many years, bless the name of the Lord. For some of us who have known her for this short time, we bless God for our life. And I believe, just like we have all said, our legacy will remain. She lives on. And the good hand of the Lord will rest upon the family and every one individual. I'll read this scripture, then I'll sing the song, or we'll all sing the song, rather. And in Romans chapter 8 and in verse 28, remember scripture tells us, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. She was a great lover of God. To them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknew, he did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn amongst many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. Then whom he justified, he glorified. And I'm sure every one of us can agree with me. Just like we said, today is not the day of mourning. It's a day of celebration because we know that she has been glorified. Can I hear believing amen there? Yeah. And this scripture will not be complete. In verse 35, scripture tells us, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, or nakedness, or perils, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. And we saw the hand of God being placed upon her. I pray that tonight that the good hand of the Lord will be rested upon her in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to end by just um, singing the song, and I pray everyone will join me tonight as we sing the song. You don't have to worry. You don't have to be afraid. Joy comes in the morning. Trouble day don't last always. For there's a friend in Jesus. Oh yes, who oh, will wipe your tears away. Oh yes, and if your heart is broken. Just lift up your hands and say, Just lift your hands and say, Oh yes, oh God, I know I can make it. Jesus, I know that I can stand. Oh yes, no matter what may come my way. Our lives in his hands, and nothing separates us from the love of Christ. I believe that tonight, may the good hand of the Lord rest upon us all in the mighty name of Jesus. And I want to recount of the for last word, or some of the words that say, the good seed that she has sown. I can call myself the last born. <laughs> because I had encounters with her just some few months back now. But we bless God for her life. I want to ask that we all rise up one more time in honor of this great woman of God and for everything that God has opportuned her. Don't just exist, live. We heard that from one of the um, uh, persons who were giving count and tributes to her. Father, we thank you tonight one more time for 
grace, for peace, for your good hand upon your daughter. All through our life on the earth, she did your bidding as your servant. Lord, let in your bosom and in your grace your hand rest upon her in the mighty name of Jesus. That her soul rest in perfect peace. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Hallelujah. Please, you may be seated. God bless you. Amen and amen. What a night. What a night indeed. We all came here with heavy hearts. But after hearing the testimonies, a new testament has been opened. And to bring a word of appreciation by way of vote of thanks, let me invite the children to give their vote of thanks. Let us put our hands together for them. Good evening. Good evening. We want to thank you for this privilege to be here today and for the warm tributes that we've received. It has moved us deeply in our hearts. We want to thank the university and the chaplaincy for making this intimate gathering possible. The tributes that we've heard today a reminder that we, that we are not her only children and that her legacy lives on in all of us. Because we are where we are today because we stand on the shoulders of giants. That means those that have gone before us have paved the way for us to be where we are and for us to pave the way for those who are coming. So we want to thank you because this means a lot to the family and for the way you have stood, us, stood by us as a community through these trying times. Thank you very much. Continuing from where my brother stopped, um, thank you once again. And there was something our dad used to say, when you cry, you still see. And um, we've cried, I guess we'll still continue crying at different points in time, but then what do we see? I know mommy would not want it to be that we finished doing all these tributes and we cry and then we go and we forget everything that her life taught. So if there's anything, I would admonish us that in true tribute to her life, after today, after tomorrow, when everything is happy again, when we're back to normal, that we don't forget, we don't let her life be wasted. We give her the tribute of living lives of impact. That's the true honor beyond what we say today, beyond tomorrow. Let's truly honor her legacy. Thank you so much, everyone. We're really grateful. Thank you. For people who haven't been able to share their tributes, we, the family, we created a website, a Forever Miss page, that will be put on the screen by the studio so everybody could join in and send their tributes. Thank you very much. On behalf of the whole family, I want to say a big thank you for honoring my big sister, Aizenta Olufigbe Imokume Obanyun. It's nice to sit here and hear those great words. I looked at her as my big sister, and I've always been that little sister. But today, sitting here and truly acknowledging that Aize was a great woman, and I want to thank you all. Thank you.
we all are now representatives and ambassadors of the legacy and the life of Professor Isaac Obayo for a closing prayer to round us in this service. May we all rise as we invite the chaplain, Covenant University. Hallelujah. As we close tonight, it's also important to note that um, by privilege of grace, I stand on the behalf of the Chancellor, God's servant, Bishop David O. Oyedepo. And um, on that premise, I declare by the hand and the grace of God that the favor and the help of God will be available to us all. To the immediate family, the comforting ministry of the Holy Spirit will never depart from you. Amen. To everyone here present and this entire community, we ask that the power of the Most High God surrounds around Covenant University, Landmark University. We commit the next two days, the service of songs tomorrow, and also the burial and interment on Tuesday. Father, that every one individual, individuals came from America, from UK, from everywhere in the world, coming to honor this great woman. We ask, oh God, there shall be no evil report for anyone. Amen. Everyone who came on this journey will go back safely. In the mighty name of Jesus. As we get back to our homes now, whatever we left as a concern, we will meet it as a testimony. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we ask, O oh God, for the two days left, direct in every affairs, let the wisdom of God be available. The same order of peace and serenity that you took in this program today, let it be multiplied in the other programs in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you and thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Did I hear believing amen? amen? So I'm, I'm sure that every one of us were aware that tomorrow the program will be from 2 to 4. Good. And that will be at the Youth Chapel. Youth Chapel is the event out there, while the interment will be on Tuesday, and that will be 10 to 11. Please, let's take note of those times. We can quickly come in there, especially for faculty staff of Covenant University, and uh, get to do what is required of us. Hallelujah. Let's share the goodness in fellowship, and surely... God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Our covenant greetings, I have, I have dominion, and I take dominion. Congratulations and amen. Congratulate your neighbor to your right and to the left. Good night. God bless you.